Hello and welcome to Water Cooler, episode number 258, also known as 69 plus 69 plus 69 plus 51. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is the show where I, Chris Locks, I'm on a kick it with my cruel digital buds, drink some brews or whatever, kick it, hang out Philly style, whatever we do. <coughs> yep. With me today, Kalen Beats here. What's going on? Hi, Kalen. Hi. Gary's here. What's up, what's up? Hey, Gary, you want to clear your throat? Yeah, sorry about that. Oh, it's okay. Just, uh, just making sure you're good. Matt's here. Hey, brother. And Dawson. Hey. Oh. Hey, what's happening? How are you? What is going? What is this? What's Who's what? this guy? Who's what? What? I don't know. Talkative Dawson. Hey. Like, hey, hey. Happy Monday. Smooth. It's Monday. Talking Dawson. Yeah. Is Monday a day of the week that you like? Apparently. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's Monday, man. Yeah, I'm glad to see the positive outlook on the yeah. day. Yeah, it's a good day. It's like, yeah, Dawson has a case in here. of the Mondays, and he's, yeah. he's okay about Monday it. Monday's a good day. Yeah, it should be. I feel like as a society, we need to become more okay with Mondays. And here's the best part. It's almost done. Oh, that we need to watch very, football. <clears throat> that is That's a very good, good part of it. Yeah. There, Monday's so much easier during football season. Oh, yeah. It's just, it's not, not easier. I'm sorry. I, Monday's not a hard day, in my opinion, but it's a better way to end the day is with some NFL. Well, now that we're doing shows on Sunday nights, I just treat Sunday as a fucking work day now. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I bust ass all day Sunday. So by the time Monday comes around, I'm already into it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm fine. Same. Same. And Kalen says he loves doing the Sunday shows. Sunday shows are nice. I like the Sunday Very shows. Very weird. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Nice and easy. Yeah. Good. Just as they're the easy shows we do. I thought I wouldn't like it. Because I wanted to watch football all day. Yeah. But we kind of do it during, like, the, I mean, we just a little bit of the night game. I'm good with it now. Yeah. So we're okay. Anyway, got a lot to get into. First off, Gary. What's up? He got his PS5. Yay. Yeah. Yeah, he found one. Nephew. My nephew's going to be stoked. He found one. Yeah. So that's just lying great. on the street? Yeah. That's no. what I heard. No. <laughs> no, Gary's very savvy. I... Now, I don't know if you all heard when the PS5 thing was happening, like when everyone was ordering, sites were getting like like frozen, they were getting locked up, nobody could get them, you, you'd add them to your cart and then the site would just crash. By the way, they announced that the pre-order was going to go live on like a Wednesday, uh, no, it must have been a Thursday, and they sent it live like randomly Wednesday afternoon while we were doing this show. If you go back like to the, whatever the wow. date they announced the pre-order, I like figured it out while we were doing it, I obviously couldn't do anything. But it was just haywire. Yeah. Like there was no the pre order was completely screwed before anyone had any idea. But yeah. you knew someone who knew someone, and you got it. No, yeah, Gary. I'm Gary's so good. Gary's what good. At, he ordered it himself. He he lucky. showed me a screenshot of his computer, and he was he just had all the tabs open, and he knew what he was doing. Like if you were kind of like how people were really good at calling into the radio and winning prizes, and they they had a system. Gary had a system, but for ordering pre ordering a PS five. And that's all derived from like years of trying to do Apple stuff, like phone, yeah. phones. Yeah, that's long. right. Smart. Yeah, he had he had the atomic clock up yeah. on, on his wow. screen. <laughs> I, I was that's really serious. impressed. Like I, I I didn't realize how much it took to to. But I mean, more that more more people than not uh, were complaining about how they couldn't get it, and it was it crashed on them. And Gary figured it out. I got lucky. Congratulations. Thanks. So it's good. Be a personal achievement day. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, definitely not. Well, Gary was looking in a PS5 stuff. <laughs> well, Gary was looking at PS5 stuff. I was getting alerts on my phone because uh, Laura Lee has been messaging me like things like, "Oh, check out this restaurant" and stuff like that. But she's DMing me on Instagram, and I, I just <coughs> casually just go, "Gary, your your mom's been DMing me on Instagram," and <laughs> and without looking up, it just goes, "That's a sentence nobody wants to hear." <laughs> 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 I start <started> dying. <laughs> That's true. Very true, though. Yes, yeah. you never want to hear that sentence. Definitely, <laughs> anyone to ever give you that, tell you that sentence. So, <laughs> I don't blame Gary for sounding so defeated <laughs> when uh, when I told him. Did Laura Lee bring any good ideas to the table? Oh, I should show you, man. Yeah, she's giving me like these pop up restaurants. But I mean, who knows now what they're gonna what's gonna happen? Because today, a lot of announcements have been made within all the the restaurant world. Hmm. But uh, but yeah, I'll show you them. I, I can't think of them off the top of my head, but cool. you should. Uh, yeah, you should definitely hit those up too. And we should give some some dual reviews. Now we got a lot of show today. 
Uh, for those who aren't subscribed to our Patreon, I recommend that you do subscribe because we are we are about to start the Super Bowl, uh, which is our best soup bracket. Mm. Now, there's some, if there's something on the show that we don't do, it's take a bit and, and just really stretch it out to where it's just long and annoying. We've never done we that. We don't no. do that. No. Mm-mm. No. We, we, we've obviously done our Practically Starving Semicircle, the Hunger Dome. Yeah. I mean – we like to just give you the right amount Has of... Has T-Rex been located? Kalen? Best food? No. Still unknown. Kalen is the, the T-Rex from Jurassic Park. He is her publicist. It's amazing right. that a dinosaur yeah. can just walk the earth and nobody's fucking seen him. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, you tell, tell Are me you even it. looking or are you just waiting for her to call? Both. Yeah, you're actually going out <laughs> and looking? I'm also waiting for her to call, so... Did I can't. you get the T Rex a Bluetooth headphone? Because it's really hard to get that little arm all the way up to the ear. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's why they can't yeah, hear. Falling out of there. And yeah, love a out. go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or speakerphone. You know, it's got to be tough. Yeah, yeah. There, there. You should have thought I'll, I'll about find, that. I'll find her. You keep Anything saying that. Like Kalen just goes out and he puts the papers on with the little strips cut out at the bottom with his number, like if seen, yeah, and it's just yeah. the Jurassic Park poster. It's like Kalen, <laughs> you got any better than that? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, you gotta man. start somewhere. <laughs> you gotta, you start, gotta somewhere. start somewhere. <laughs> you, I agree with that, but start somewhere better, man. I'm worried. Yeah. So anyway, we're not the show that beats bits. In the <laughs> no, 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 definitely no, no. not. We have, so we we are gonna. Um, so on the Patreon episode, Matt gave his first draft of the bracket. Mm-hmm. We we're very unhappy. <laughs> There's a lot of a lot of fighting, people. a lot of infighting. Yeah, so I think today he's going to give a second draft, and yep. we can we well, I've can refreshed confirm. it just yeah. just ever so much. Which I'm yeah, I'm very excited about. I hope you didn't change the names of each bracket. No, those are all the okay, same. Okay. Yeah, don't worry. I'm a fan. Those of are all the same. I am too. Soup I plantation. Want to I want to hear him again. Still a thing. <laughs> Great. Uh, and then Kalen, I think you're double flicking. Double flicking. Double flicking wow. today. Oh my yeah, God. we got a lot of show. But why don't we kick it off? We all love to start the show with. The listener comments. That's right. These are comments taken straight, comments and posts taken straight from our Facebook group. And our Facebook group is open to everybody listening. If you uh, can answer three, if you can answer three questions. Two or three. Two, two or three. three questions. And all you got to do is just go to facebook.com slash groups slash Bobo Boy Army Worldwide LLC and join the group. A lot of discussion happening. A lot of uh, – the, the Bobo Boy community is thriving within within that group. First it's a bro off, community, but I know uh, bro, The bro community, yes. Now, first off, I want to give props to Joe Giacchero. 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 First off – he is killing it. I don't know if anybody follows him. Um, on Instagram, he created a whole water cooler Instagram. It's at watercooler69, which is <laughs> which is phenomenal. And he does a lot of artwork. Like remember I told you guys about the, the Chris Apples the Chris Apples art that he did once I announced my, my apples. Mm-hmm. Well he's gone on to do more and I want to talk about him. First off, he did a food pyramid and he says, Guess whose food pyramid is this? And at the bottom row you have a bunch of burritos. The next row up, avocados, cigarettes, and vodka. It's made of vodka. Next row up is naked juice, green juice. Next row up are pickles and pr- premier protein. And the top is a pina colada. I would assume this is Dawson. This is Dawson's could food, be Galen. food group. So and it could be <laughs> Kalen, too. Who knows? <laughs> not, not, Never not. Too far Kalen off. would, yeah, Kalen. I, I, that's I, enjoy, definitely, I enjoy those things. That's so definitely well. yeah. 2014 Kalen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, <laughs> And then, but what he's done recently is pretty phenomenal. He gave us, he gave us our own uh, coat of arms or a seal. It's our, incredible. Our, our, it's it's based off of the Fantastic. Ramones, uh, the Ramones logo, but in it he has the eagle in the middle. It says, "Well, it says water cooler up top." It says all of our names going around it, just like uh, the Ramones did. And then in the uh, in the middle, it's an eagle, but with a dog's head. So it's the eagle <laughs> body, but the the dog's a face. And it says woof woof around him. And then in one talon, he has the claw. Mm-hmm. And the other talon, he has HSF, a spoon that says HSF, hot spoon food. Yep, sure. Um, whereas, like, the Ramones had a baseball bat and, like, the, the, uh, the branch. And then in the middle, when the Ramones had a bunch of arrowheads in the middle, uh, Joe put a bunch of beans. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, yeah we, it's a very it's... detailed... 
Very detailed seal. And uh, he is now selling it as a shirt. And the link is in Watercooler 69's profile. Oh, really? Or you just go to storefrontier.com slash product slash WC and there's shirts. <laughs> this is a bit. <laughs> that sounds like it. Storefrontier.com slash product slash WC. Watercooler. Yeah. And uh, and the, the, the shirts are, uh, are, he says, the link is in the profile. I set the price as low as I could, $20.69. I'm not looking to profit. I just want as many people to rep the Bobo Boy Army LLC as possible. Any proceeds will be donated to Tearing Up on Patreon. Nice. So there you go. And lastly, he also made this one, Matt, which is, a, I love me some clam, and there's you shirtless in a clam shell. <laughs> so, it's, wow. It's the yeah. image. I love me some clam. Pretty, All of us pretty phenomenal. For. So, yeah, he's very talented. Yeah, know. I didn't know that I needed that in my life. Mm-hmm. Well, we no, all you're do. You're better for that. Thank you're you. You're welcome. Yeah, I'll just hold that up for Dawson. <laughs> to admire. So, yeah, thank you, Joe, for uh, for the artwork. And, yeah, we love everybody who actually puts in an effort and takes time. We, I mean, we yeah, this stuff takes all the time, time like, for people to do. We don't believe it. We don't believe it. Thank you, guys. So thank you Flatter. to Joe. Next up, uh, Kenzie Chrisman writes, COVID has me using up my pod so fast that I actually have to take up my earbuds and socialize. We can't be having that. So assuming there's some crossover fandom here, if someone who has not heard a single episode was to decide to jump into Daves of Thunder, what's the recommended starting point and what snack best accompanies the listen? Gary, why don't you answer that? Because I think uh, you're the most well versed, too. Mm, I mean, I I think you are, but I appreciate that. I would say it depends what your threshold is, but really, the best way to understand that show is to start from episode one. And I'll tell you that that podcast, more than any other podcast I've ever heard, developed what it was going to be during episodes one, two, and three. And you may have to slug through a little bit before you finally get hooked to like episode five, but most of that show is jokes about the show itself, which is yeah. a little hard to explain. But if you don't start from the beginning, you're not going to get a lot of the references and jokes. I think my first day was episode two or three. Yeah, I but, and in. and and the first uh, the first few episodes are like a production meeting, yes. and, then, and then it finally becomes a show. But yeah, start at the beginning just so you get all the jokes in for best snack to listen to. I mean, Shex Mix, you'll get it. Sure, Shex Mix, <laughs> yeah, definitely Shex strong. Mix. Later, all right, Quana Macra. I think I'm saying her name right. She has an unusual first name. She's very nice. I've met her a few times. She writes, is, brex- is breakfast pho the same as breakfast ramen? I added the guac for obvious reasons, but it didn't disappoint. We'll do it again. 10 out of 10. Woof, woof. And she posted a picture of ramen with some avocados in it. Wouldn't that be breakfast? <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> oh, oh, we've been saying it wrong the whole yeah, we time. Take a lap around the diamond <laughs> for that one. <laughs> you know. It's out of the park. Breakfast. Yeah, well, we'll be getting into some fun hot ramen talk in the soup plantation round mm-hmm. of uh, the Super Bowl. So make sure to tune in for that. Kathy Lowry writes, my fiance just said something about gambling, and immediately I responded, I always be gambling, 69-69. He, <laughs> he looked so confused and was like, what? <laughs> and Kathy, I don't blame him. That yeah. is a weird thing to respond <laughs> with. Now, we all get it, especially in the Patreon, because always be gambling, 69-69 is a user. Uh, who who comments frequently? But yeah, very odd thing to to just jump in with. Yeah. So like, I don't this blame podcast them. that I listen to. No, no, not the main feed. The one you have to yeah. pay for. That's the one. That's what I'm referencing. No, right you know now. the guys I bought lunch for an undetermined amount of money. <laughs> yeah, but those guys. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I don't blame them, Kathy. Joe Urbanek writes every every time movies from her childhoods are brought up. I'm a little sad. When this gem never gets mentioned, does anyone else remember The Stupids? It's so amazingly stupid and cracked me up so much as a kid. I do remember that movie, The Stupids, with Tom Arnold. Mm-hmm. And it was very bad. It was very <laughs> dumb. Yep. But I do remember certain scenes like uh, like uh, when the kid was ordering at a Chinese restaurant mm-hmm. and he says, give me the cash, you chicken. And the guy thought he said, give me the cash, you chicken. So there's one joke. Brilliant <laughs> wordplay. <laughs> And also, We've there's gotta another. Got to recruit some writers for the yeah. Super Bowl here. There's another scene where Tom, Ar- <laughs> where Tom Arnold is trying the, uh, the the main character. He's trying to catch up or for, for a chase or like chase someone down. And he's like, "How should I chase him?" And he looks and he sees a bike and he goes, two wheels." And he sees a car, four wheels, and then he sees rollerblades, eight wheels, <laughs> and then he picks rollerblades and decides he's rollerblades to go chase the guy. Oh so that's how dumb he was in the movie. <laughs> 
Those are the two things I, I remember about that, that I, movie. Sounds or, pretty funny to me. <laughs> yeah. I remember not liking it, yeah. but it has recently crossed my radar in preparation for Rotten Tomatoes games. I haven't used it yet because I feel like it's very obviously a low score. <laughs> oh, yeah. But it may pop up at a Rotten Tomatoes game Ooh, sooner than later. A little Just teaser. I hope Bob yeah. Brian doesn't hear that. Yeah, goddamn cheater. <laughs> you remember that, that that movie and the movie Carpool seem to go hand in hand in my brain, in my memory. You remember Carpool with David Pamer? Oh, yeah. Rhea Perlman? I remember mm. liking that movie. Tell me what hemorrhoids were. All right. Now, I can do a round that's movies Chris confuses for another movie. <laughs> that is a good round. You, uh, you'd have a wealth of content there. Yeah. All right. Katie Lesniewski writes. Lesniewski. <laughs> yeah, Katie Lesniewski writes, if, anybody, if anyone is looking for a new Seltzy to try, I like how oh. she called it a Seltzy, I was pleasantly surprised with all these flavors included in the holiday variety pack. Oh, it's, she, she posted like a Bud Light Seltzy. But it's holiday flavored peppermint. Ooh, <laughs> Dawson What's wrong with Dawson that? doesn't like that. It gets better. And then the other flavors that she mentions are there's cranberry, Ugh. ginger snap, mm. and apple crisp. I'm in. Hashtag woof woof. I think I'm in too. Hell yeah. Uh, just not the peppermint. Why not? I, I heard peppermint know, was very good. I it's heard it's refreshing. Was a- yeah. You I tell don't... me after a long day in the backyard, you haven't cracked open a mint soda. Yeah. <laughs> It's like drinking a candy cane. <laughs> However, I will say peppermint is popular in this building because we have that giant bag of chunk nibbles and it went fast. Yeah, it's it did. gone. Yeah. Yeah. Peppermint. And the cookies and cream were really great the too. Cookies and cream were great too. But I love Oreos. I don't care who knows it. I told Adam Corolla that to his face because he famously hates Oreos. Yeah. And when you're you're crazy. Oreos are fantastic. And then I proceeded to dump more Oreos on my frozen yogurt in front of him. Nice. Uh, Way to stick it to your boss. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Don't show him. Yeah. yeah, I got a bad pay cut after that, but, <laughs> yeah. but I think it was worth it, right? <laughs> uh, and lastly, and I think we all kind of know each other's names, but we should revisit this every year. Kevin McCarthy writes, well, first you put up a meme, and it's how to drink eggnog. Step one, <laughs> throw it in the trash. <laughs> and then he writes, how does this group feel about the nog? And I think we discussed before, I... have for my whole life, have hated eggnog until last year when Mike Dawson brought in eggnog with some booze. With Christian Brothers brandy. Well, what, yeah, what was it? Yeah, it's Christian Brothers brandy. And just regular eggnog? It was, yeah. And it was phenomenal. I mean, I don't think I could have more than one glass, but it was quite a treat. It was like a dessert. It was a dessert <clears throat> treat, like a chocolate tea. You took a 180 that day. You did. I did. Really I, did. I was happily... Able to say that I, I and that got made me it. happy because I'm just. I, it's not that I hate eggnog and I just want it. I, I'm. A, I. I want to oust it from from my life, but in my brain I think, why does everyone like it? Why do people like this? I need to find out why. There. there has to be something there, I've and been, I figured it out last year. Once Dawson showed me the way, that's good. Yeah, I've been on the record for several years. Love me some nog. <laughs> I have no problems with it. It's delicious. <laughs> KC is just. Oh, man, he's loving it. Also, speaking of Christmas, again, just throwing it out there, I love the Toy Story drops. Obviously, the original claw drops can't be beaten, but we're getting into Santa Claus territory. And I feel like we should put it out to the fans here. There's a chance for a good holiday clause, but it's got to be the right. It's got to be a bit of a pun. I don't know what it is, but I feel like someone out there can find it, and I'll be damned if we don't get that. By Christmas time to use That's one of those great. cracks one open. What do you say? You're totally good. right. A cracking a claw after Thanksgiving needs some Santa Claus. Yeah. 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 But Santa. ideally you want – don't you want like a clip that's like, damn you, Claws! Exactly. Where he doesn't – he naturally does not have Santa. We can't be chopping stuff out to make it work yeah. because it's yes. not going to sound right. And don't we, use the Tim Allen movie because that's already a pun on its own. It's like the Santa Claws. The Claws. Right. Yeah. Oh, no, I made that Actually, in the yeah, right, I, I in the right context, those. that could be good. I want to hear those. I think we have to rule on them in mm-hmm. the room. All right. That's fair. Anyway. It's, it's going to be hard. But I mean Joe just there. did a, sh- uh, a logo based off of the presidential seal that the Ramones took and then he copied the Ramones. So, yeah. I guess it's all – it's all good fun. Also, yeah. speaking of Christmas, we're now getting to that season. I'm looking forward to putting on a Santa costume and eating some fucking reindeer. <laughs> it's been sitting in my office for a month now. Yes. I'm worried it might go bad if we don't okay. eat it soon. So. Let's get Matt the Santa costume. We could all put we, – we have to figure – yeah, we got to get the photo shoot ready for yeah, Christmas card. Yeah, but it's, it's coming up. I've had a few of our more talented uh, – 
fans reach out to me and offer to help. Mm. Really? Yeah. Mm. That's excellent. Then get them on board. Okay. All, right. All hands on deck for this because <laughs> we, we need this thing All to hands shut. on deck the halls, you mean. Oh! Come on. Well, you know, how you, you know who right you are. Right there, Dawson. Right. <laughs> wow. I mean. Right. I'll see myself out. It's, just, it's amazing today. Well, Matt, is it, does, it, does it bother you the way how people decorate for Halloween too early? When does Christmas decorating start for you? Normally, I do believe you should start around Thanksgiving time. Oh. I feel like this year is a weird exception. If people want to put it up a little bit early, it doesn't really bother me this particular year. People are going through a hard time. They want to cheer themselves up early, maybe put their cell phone on when they're doing a podcast. <laughs> um, well, half our listeners are cell phones, Matt. Remember. Uh, that's that's true. true. That was actually one of them trying to call yeah. into the show, I think. Yeah, they, they want to chime in. Uh, but yeah, generally, I think you should not have your house decorated this early. It seems a little bit crazy to be this early because by the time Christmas rolls around, the charm's worn off. Oh, That's my thought, nice but it's not fresh. my business. Maybe it doesn't wear off for you. So I tend to, to agree me. with Matt, but I've also noticed that most people are lining up the way Matt is. A lot of my neighborhood's decorated. A lot of my parents' neighborhood are already decorated. Yeah. Full Christmas. I mean, I went to Home Depot yesterday, and a lot of people were in line with the fake Christmas trees. Yeah. So they're, they're already going, and I'm thinking... Do I, okay, this is my first Christmas in the new house. Do I go fake tree or real tree? And I'm trying to do all the math. Like fake tree, of course, you get a nice fake tree, put it up in the attic, bring it out every year. Always looks good. You don't get the smell, which is a, which is a con. You don't have to take care of it all the time, which is a plus. I don't really know what, what we want to do or, do, or it's our first Christmas. Do we just get the real tree and the experience of going out and picking it out and tying it up to the top of your car and bringing it home is kind of nice, too. So, yeah, I'm kind of wrestling with myself. Do I get the fake tree or the real tree? What real do you tree. got? Real oh. tree. 100% real tree. Real tree. Yeah. Gary? I, that's what I would prefer to have, but we haven't done it yet because of this is our first Christmas and a house big enough for it. And I don't know if we'll be doing it this year just because it is kind of a, a trek and you have to, like, go out to the place and I don't know. Yeah. Just right now. I don't know. Especially after today. I don't know how much people are really going to be going out. So. Yeah. Oh, you're scared of a claw. All right. Well, Gary's just going to cr- just crack it, man. <laughs> Ooh, watch yourself. It's the claw. <laughs> yeah, I, I, maybe I will go real tree then if everybody is. Uh, Absolutely the real, should. The real tree your first experience. Your first thing together. I know it's an experience. I get it. I, I used to get them the from experience. my mom. I would, I would just get them because uh, I would deliver her a tree because my apartment wouldn't have one. Fake you- trees are for retirement. You think? I, yeah. They look so good, though, and they're just so reliable, and uh, I think it's better for the environment, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, you're out cutting down trees and just letting them yeah, die in your living room. They're Christmas tree farms. <laughs> They'll grow back. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, no, there are trees specifically grown for this purpose. Yeah. They're okay. not like they're yeah. not doing deforestation right. or anything. <laughs> All for right, us selfish Americans who I want just, a Christmas tree. All right, I, I do like the real tree and the smell. But here's the question: Do you have any ornaments or any lights or anything? Because you can spend all the money you want on a real tree, but if you got nothing to put on it, I think we got some stuff. Okay, good. Yeah, because what Jen and I used to do is we should just go to Ralph's and get the the rosemary tree. It's just like a little. It's I don't know. It's about knee high, and yeah, we do. We just for decorate who? that. <laughs> Ah, uh, Gary can't. Right, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Help himself. Uh, Chris, do you have anything planned as far as Christmas decorating? Uh, I want to do lights. I, I definitely want to do Christmas lights outside. That'd be that'd be really nice. And I think now's the time to get the lights because, as I said, people are already getting their Christmas stuff together. I mean, there may not be decorating right now, but we should have all of our supplies. And I definitely want some nice lights because we're plus we're new to the neighborhood. We want to show everybody that hey, we we participate. We participate. Yes. Yeah. What are you going to do, colored? I don't know. I'm not really a fan of the color, to be honest. Oh, boy. Get that <laughs> you didn't even see it coming. No. I was legitimately asking, Chris. No. White lights are good. White lights. <laughs> Make a house stand out a little more. I don't know. I'm, I'm with Chris on this. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Dawson. So do you guys think there's a difference between, and this is, I'm not even doing a joke, the white and the clear, like the frosted white, you know, that you would sometimes get mixed in with the... Uh, there's like a white light and there's like a yellowish hue that from the clear, I think. Right. right? I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I think the yellow. I don't. I just, I don't... That's what we have. We have the clear. I don't like the... I mean, what I, when I say I didn't like the colored lights, I mean, I don't like them when they're <laughs> That's just... That's not what you said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to, for clarity's sake, I'm trying to be more clear. 
I don't like the ones that where they alternate colors throughout the entire sure. the entire run. You can also do a solid, just you know, all one color. Yeah, I could do that too. Yeah, but yeah. I'm just going to tread very lightly in this conversation <laughs> while I agree. They with do that. have cool new lights, both for the outside of your house and the inside. They're LED, where you can just change. Oh yeah, via remote. Yeah, we have oh, uh, we really have those cool. like market lights, the hanging lights in our side yard that uh, that change colors whatever we want with those it via are cool. remote control. Anyway. We're getting ahead of ourselves. We're talking about Christmas decorations right now. We haven't even hit Thanksgiving yet. So anyway, thank you for the listener comments. we got a lot to get into. Um, I was at Home Depot, as I mentioned yesterday. I had a weird experience. So I ordered this thing, this like pizza stone for my grill uh, at home where I obviously cook pizzas on. I was really excited. I ordered it three weeks ago because hoping, you know, to just get into, get some pizzas going before Thanksgiving. And uh, and I, I it gets delivered to Home Depot last week, and I pick it up. I take it home. I'm real excited because this thing, it's like a weird pizza stone that they only make in Germany. Um, but I need it, but it because my grill is a, for like a weird German grill. It's like a small size, so they only make it. You have to get the same brand. So I order it. Home Depot has it. They ship it out from Georgia. I get it. I take it home. It's shattered. It's in pieces when I get home. So I call Home Depot and I say, hey. My pizza stone I took home, it's shattered. What can I do? And she goes, just bring it back. We'll give you a discount. We're really sorry. She's very nice. Like, we're so sorry. Bring it back. We'll give you a discount. We'll figure something out to do. That's awful. Just bring it back. And make sure you ask for a supervisor or a lead when you get to the customer service desk. And I said, great. So as we said, we do shows on Sunday nights. At Last night after uh, the show, I go to Home Depot, which is close to the studio. And I walk Uh-oh. in. And I go to the customer service, and I say, hi, I'd like to speak to a supervisor or a lead. And they're like, why? What's wrong? And it's like a- Great start. Yeah, and it's like a bunch of like teenagers working. And I go, oh, well, and I brought, bust out the pizza stone, which is like a pretty fragile, it's almost ceramic. And, uh, but it was, and I brought the, the thing that was delivered, which was one of those little yellow uh, bubble paper envelopes. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, I think it might have been the packaging or something, but this thing just came all smashed up. And they look and they're like, "Oh yeah, that sucks." Um, okay, well, we don't have any uh, supervisor or leads here, so we'll we'll take care of this for you. And I go, "Okay." So then the, the girl proceeds like, "Okay, we're going to give you a refund on on this." So just uh, click OK there on the little thing, and they get they refund my credit card. She's like, "Okay, now we're going to order you another one." I'm like, "Okay." And then so they get so they get on the phone to like call it in, and while she's on the phone, <laughs> this other kid answers the phone next to her because that's a customer service desk, and he's like. Yeah, sorry, ma'am. I just talked to my supervisor in the back. Can't do that for you. Ah. And I'm just like, really? Wow. Re- okay, okay. This is who I'm dealing with. And then I look over to the next person, and the next girl has three other employees uh, around her. And she's like, oh, my God, this bitch that I just talked to. She was like, who am I speaking to? And I said, customer service. And they're like, I want a name. Is that your name, customer service? And then the whole you know peanut gallery was like, oh, man, what, <laughs> that sucks. So now I'm, deal- I'm dealing like, with this like as uh, for customer service. And then, uh, and then I, and then I, she puts me on the phone. She's like, "Okay, what's your address?" You know, why don't you just talk to her? And she just hands me the phone, and I'm talking to a corporate or whoever to place this order. And she's like, "Okay, what's your address?" I give it to her. All right, now we're gonna need your credit card number. I'm like, "Are you just gonna charge me the exact same thing that I already paid for that you refunded me now?" And she's like, "Yeah." And I go, "I don't want it anymore." And I left. Good for you. And I was mad. Oh, yeah. And I was mad. I was like, "What the hell?" Yeah. And I even I I put a sob story together. I was like, "Look." I wanted this before Thanksgiving, and I ordered it like weeks and weeks ago, just so I could have it for Thanksgiving. And she, she's just like, "Yeah, I don't know what to do. I'm sorry. Like they just called me and wanted to order a new one. I don't know what's going on over there." And I'm like, "All right." And I just, uh, I just left. And I hung up and I told the girl, "I'm like, you know, I'm not going to order one new for Thanksgiving." She's like, "Okay, bye." Wow. And then I just left. I'm so mad. And I feel like old man yelling at cloud. But what the hell? I mean, I know. Look, uh, pe- there, Home Depot and there are a lot of like essential services that are working during the pandemic, and of course, I appreciate that and everything. But come on, yeah, come I feel on. Like our Home Depot is notoriously awful. Yeah, that's why I said, uh oh, when you said it's close by the studio. Like, <laughs> I hate that Home Depot. Oh, I, really? Oh my god, I'll go if I need to go while I'm up at work. I'll go to one of the ones that's a couple miles from here. Like that one, their customer service is not good. Yeah, just the fact that you can go to three different employees and ask them what where this particular item is and they will each tell you a different aisle number yeah which i've had that experience so many times in my early days picking up stuff for adam there yeah also like like uh i guess gary would be because you go to home depot a lot too yeah. right i like, was there last night too i was oh nice we love, we love home depot i um so we're installing like a new ceiling light in our dining room 
And so the new one that we're installing has a smaller base than the old one, than the old ceiling fan that was there. So there's like some cutout holes sure. around it. And we obviously got to fill it out. So, she, so I'm walking through Home Depot and she's like, oh, yeah, why don't you ask one of the guys how we fill that out? And I'm like, I don't. I mean, I could. I I know guys who work in construction. I know, like, I can just ask one of my friends who works in construction what they can do and show them pictures. And she goes, "I'll text you pictures. Just ask one of the people there." I'm like, "I don't, I don't, I don't know if I want to like ask like I one because I just don't know if they would know. I don't know if I go to just any person at Home Depot, they'll be like, oh yeah, this is what you do.'" And uh, and we got into a little bit of an argument because she thinks I'm one of those guys who hates asking for directions and hates asking for. And I may, I mean, I maybe there, there's some truth to that, but. I, Earlier today, you wouldn't put more than one modification on your in and out order because you said it was too much work. Oh, there's that's Taylor. completely different. That, yeah. In my it's opinion, a different that's thing. completely but different. But like, like if Joya asked you to do that, would you just ask somebody there? Probably not. Why not? I am the guy who doesn't want to ask for directions. I don't assume that anyone who works at Home Depot would know how to do that. All the reasons you said, you? and I have, I can ask Adam or Stromer, or like I have a, a wealth of like there's yeah. enough knowledge in my inner circle that I could text pictures. Same reason I wouldn't go on WebMD, like I'll, in a pinch, if I'm really worried about something, I'll text Drew and ask him. Like yeah. if I have that knowledge base there, I would rather go to the people I know and can reciprocate. Yeah, and I mean, in college, we all, well, if <laughs> most people punched holes in walls at one point or another. <laughs> And you've had to repair a wall. Patch the wall, yeah. So you, you should already know how to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just want to obviously make sure that we're doing it right. Anyway, I asked the guy, and he was very helpful, and he knew everything. So, <laughs> so that, well, there you go. That is the uh, moral of <clears throat> that story. All right, let's get let's get to some segments here. Let's flick some bean first, and then we're going to end it with I don't I don't know what kind of turmoil Matt's going to put us through today with round two of the uh, of the bracket. So, Let's call it by its name. Or the draft nope. of the, the Super Bowl. Super the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. All right. So let's get into it. Kalen has two things he's going to flick. I'm very excited. Here we go. And now. Fuck. That was a <laughs> short Good job, Kalen. It was what? awesome. Thank you. Love it. Why Couldn't Kaylin... do that better. Now I must ask. Matt, what's on the menu? No. <laughs> Wait, why is Kalen laughing? How do you can hear that? I can't. I can barely hear things through your headphones. Okay. <laughs> We all want to know one thing. one thing Your opinion's what we need, we need. So Kaylin get on that mic, that mic. And flick the bean Oh, oh Kaylin flick the bean Respect, Respect all, all women, women. <laughs> <laughs> Gobble gobble <laughs> uh, Alright first thing today is the Queen's Gambit Ooh. Oh yes yeah. This has been number one on Netflix for a minute Yes. People started talking about it, and they haven't stopped. I keep hearing just more chitter-chatter about the Queen's Gambit. I've seen it. Gary's seen it. Chris has seen it. Matt, you're one, a couple episodes in. Three episodes into Three it. Three episodes in. Dawson? Haven't seen it. Haven't you, seen it. Oh, you're going to love it, man. I'm not sure if it's for Dawson. But <laughs> <laughs> why? I'm curious why. Like yeah, kind of show. I'm, I'm curious why, too. That's it doesn't amazing. seem like your kind of show. I, I think I'm the only one in this room who actually plays chess actively. No, not How dare you? Okay. I didn't you know play actively? Actually. Actively. Oh, that's awesome. Like yes. on a real board? Yes, me and, me and friends play chess all the time. Oh yeah, well, chess is great. How Maybe dare I'm you? Wrong. Uh, it's a seven episode mini series. It's on Netflix now. It stars Anya Taylor Joy, who was the main girl in Split. Yeah. And then was in the, the next movie, Glass. Uh, also, the main girl in The Witch, which oh, is yeah. a great, great horror movie. Uh, and then another recognizable face, Thomas Brody Sangster, who is Jojen Reed on Game of Thrones. And the, the, li- the little boy in Love Actually. Oh, yeah, he's Liam oh, yeah. Neeson's, yeah. Neeson's little boy. Yep. His son. Who um, ran that was the episode the, I watched last night. Who ran through the airport to catch the girl, and he played drums for her. When she's saying Mariah Carey's all I want for Christmas is you. So Love Actually is. <laughs> Sorry? I just thought we were oh. into a whole new So good. Man. We're getting a Love Actually season. I can't wait. God. But anyway, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> so the show follows the life of, life of Beth Harmon, who is an orphan turned chess prodigy. Uh, it's currently at 100% on Rotten Tomatoes with a 96% audience rating. Wow. Although, that is hot. Although, as I said before, Dawson I'm would to hate feel it. like the IMDb <laughs> ratings for TV shows are actually the most accurate ways to look at them. So that is an 8.8 out of 10. Oh. Uh, so Kalen already has, he has some 
He's going to get He's real lazy and just start using the IMDb yeah. score as his flipping <laughs> score. I'm going to be real upset. No, this well, this is actually going to be a rather short review because this is it is a good show. It's a good just kind of like comfort food show. It's very bingeable. Um, it's well paced. It's not too long. I watched one episode and then watched the rest of the show in two sittings. Um, and the main actress is really good. Just her like little minor facial expressions kind of make the show, especially when she's just sitting there playing chess, thinking about stuff. She's really good. The show's just it is. It's good. I haven't heard anybody say anything bad about it. Like I said, it's just kind of comfort food. B- binge it. Flickable. Eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. Solid Remarkably out of 10. close to that IMDb yeah. score. Yeah. Really yeah, almost the whole point off. Yeah. I don't think that that's that. Close. News Nook is that? Isn't that a little <laughs> close to uh, the IMDb score? Yeah. All right. That's not a point off. It's a tenth of a point I off. It's almost a point. Eight tenths. It's not even almost a point well, off. Well, in my yeah, it is. scale, it's a point. Eight what was it, 8.1? 8.0 8. versus 8.8. Oh, 8.8. Okay. So 96% of the audience <laughs> loved the show. Dawson's part of the 4%. Probably. <laughs> I haven't seen it. <laughs> Why don't you I'm, like the show? Yeah, Dawson? I hate not. it. It's really you good. Like chess. Can you just give it a chance? Jesus, no, yeah. I can't. I'm not going to watch it now. Do you even play chess? No, nope, never. <laughs> chess is stupid, and so are girls. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Um, all right, I that should be the drop. Casey Peter pulls nope, from there. There you go. That is yeah. the drop. That is the one single hey, drop. I didn't take that long to get one a drop. drop. Probably get a couple of drops. <laughs> That's up. There's one. Don't drop forget that one. That yeah, there's did. one other drop. <laughs> <definitely good. laughs> yeah. All right, I got uh, another movie Christmas that I watched lights. just the other day. What could go wrong? <laughs> it's called Prospect. It's a 2018 movie. It's available now on Netflix. It's directed by two guys, Zeke Earl and Chris Caldwell. Is their feature debut. They did a couple shorts before. There's nothing I recognized. Stars Sophie Thatcher, who there's no other credits I recognize from her. Pedro Pascal. Yes. The Red Viper. Oberyn. Game of Thrones. Narcos, voice of Mandalorian. And Jay Duplass. Um, oh. It's about a teenage girl and her father travel to an alien moon in the hopes of striking it rich by prospecting gems out of the moon's toxic forest. 88% critic, 71% audience Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, 97 minutes long. Sweet and spot. This, this is like, uh, just as like someone who loves sci-fi, this is a really fun little sci-fi movie that it's both obviously low budget and incredibly impressive at just how well they make it on what is obviously a low budget movie. Uh, I tried to look up the actual budget, which is always on IMDb and like Wikipedia. Couldn't find it on either of those. I was mm. still searching for the budget actually when... I got called in here, so that's why I was late. Sorry about that. All I could find is that it was made for under $4 million. Mm. But if you like sci-fi movies, it's, it's, it's really fun. Uh, the whole forest that they're on, the shots are really great. It looks really cool. This moon that they're on with the giant planet in the background. Uh, all the little like uh, sci-fi gadgets that they use throughout the movie are also really cool. Um, it's just a nice fun sci-fi movie that i had never heard of before a low budget sci-fi movie tough to pull off yeah that that must be the worst genre to be low budgeted seriously and when i was trying to find the budget there's tons of articles online about this is how you do a sci-fi movie on a low budget like (coughs) oh there's little tips yeah and uh there's a little action in it too you know Mm. a little action in the movie it's a rather dangerous planet that they're going down to uh, mine these gems from and, uh, yeah, I recommend it if you want a good little sci-fi movie to watch. Uh, also flickable, 8.8 out of 10. Oh, that got oh, the Queen's Gambit. Wow. Wow. Gambit. Right there with the Stole old IMDb score. Yep. Now, yeah. Stole it from the Queen's Gambit. Will Dawson like this other <laughs> yeah, show? Exactly. Yeah, that's Will yeah, Dawson that's like it. Yeah. I'm going to go with a no again. <laughs> <laughs> what would Dawson like? What's something that Dawson would like? A uh, horror movie. A horror movie. Yeah. Or a movie about a radio engineer. Put the two of them together. <laughs> two of them together. That's going to be his favorite movie, movie ever. Movie. Yeah. It's called Pontypool. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. Thank you, Kalen. And that was well done. Well done, my friend. And uh, Kalen wanted to do three movies today, but I told him to save one for the Patreon episode. And what? Uh, mm. I was actually deciding between three. You said I should do two, so I thought that was a good idea. Okay. What are you going to do? Uh, there is a third movie that what? I'll be doing on Wednesday. What's that one? The Dead Don't Die. There you go. That sounds like a movie Dawson would love, right? Possibly. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now we've reached that part of the show. Everybody wants uh, – they've been waiting. I waited I, – I saved it for the end because of 
you know, we want to build anticipation. You wanted to savor it like a hot bowl of soup. How appropriate that you use that analogy mm-hmm. because it's time for some Shea Fondelay. Oh, no! What type of foods might we hear of today? What might be the price? What might be the venue? So let's find out. It's time for Gary to say, hey, Matt. What's on the menu? We're going to continue our journey to the Super Bowl. Um, and again, you should absolutely listen to our last Patreon episode. But if not, we'll, I'll kind of fill you in what you missed. Is um, there a world where we finish this all around the Super Bowl? That's absolutely what's going to happen. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. I mean, how can it this. not happen that way Wait, with man. this many scintillating rounds? Okay. What? You don't think I can stretch it? I don't think you know when the Super Bowl is. Are you really stretching <laughs> it that far? First of all, how dare you? I mean, it's got to be first weekend of February, right? Second, but it's the second weekend of February. It's going mm, maybe it won't be able to go that long. <laughs> it's going a week late this year because of COVID. Really? Oh man, it's just they built in everything time. up here. Um, we also got into a bit of a, an argument about the differences between stew and soup. I personally <laughs> say that stew is a shallow soup. <laughs> Uh, one of the Facebook comments that you didn't read that somebody posted that I thought was pretty good. I want to throw it out here to the group. He said, all stews are soup, but all soups aren't stews. You're wrong. <laughs> there you go. Why do they call it there stew? Why don't they just call it thick soup? Because they the don't. guy who invented it, his thing. name was Stew, and nope. he said, I'm going to name it after me. Nope. See, there's, there's a... There's a world where there's a vegetable beef soup. Yeah. That's a good point. Thicken that up. It's called stew. Vegetable mm. beef stew. Interesting. I love that. Anyone ever had vegetable beef, beef, soup? beef soup? Phenomenal. Yeah, Campbell's has Vegetable it. soup oh, is okay. great. Okay. All right. I grew up on it. Okay, then. Well, then. Let's move on to the brackets here. Oh, and did we all agree that caprese is a salad? Yes. Oh, good. Uh, that no, that it's another not. <laughs> it's an appetizer. Oh. All right. All right, so we got four categories, and... I, I had to update it because there were some that people were upset with. We we had to throw it out. I had to shuffle things around a little bit. But I think I got it figured out. So I just wanted to run it by you guys again before we actually do the bracketing. So I want everyone to be happy here. Yes. Last time, mm. a lot of people were disappointed. I'm sure they will Ruff. also be disappointed this time. But I wanted to be on the record of, of allowing – this being truly inclusive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Refresh our memories. Just All like right. A so nice the first category, of I call it the dirty joke soup. This is the thick and creamy – you know, the kind of soups that if you say something rude to your waiter, you don't want to return the soup because you don't uh, know what yeah, you're getting yeah, back. Yeah, okay? right, right. You're so, saying they would inseminate the soup? That's possibly what would happen. <laughs> Hence, dirty joke soup. Broccoli cheddar, tomato. You're ruining this. this the, the bracket, like, now when I think of broccoli cheddar, I'm like, I almost gagged a little bit. Oh, because, there you go. Because of better, the, not, better not think about clam chowder then. <laughs> or lobster bisque. Those are the if four. I love me some clam. All right, next category, chunk sipples. And this is the chunky soup that you sip a little bit. We got the chicken noodle, the chicken tortilla, minestrone, and despite the wishes of soup Nazi Gary over here, matzo you. ball soup oh. will still be included. How dare you. Really? And if you want to just see a disgusting display of anti-Semitism. <laughs> Check yeah. out last week's Patreon episode. <laughs> Gary just missing an entire culture. Gary. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Come on, Gary. Unfair and libelous. Uh, he told me off air that he prefers his soups made from concentrate. Chin- <laughs> oh, oh, I said, oh, Jesus fucking that's Christ, good. I am not going to stand good. for this. That's good. Get out of wow. here. <laughs> How wow. fucking dare you? <laughs> you motherfucker. Most people are not going to pay to hear the origins of this joke. <laughs> <laughs> fucking asshole. <laughs> oh, my uh, God. Gary, <laughs> why would you say that? I'm kidding, of course. <sighs> um, and then moving on to something not racist at all. The next category, soup plantation. <laughs> this is all of the Asian soups. This one has remained unchanged. Yeah. So this one is still wonton, miso, pho, and ramen. Would it be breakfast? Breakfast, yes. And then the last category, this one's been changed a bit because chili and gumbo were both removed. Because you guys were screaming at me about like. that. This is the Miss Soup-laneous category. Miss soup <laughs> Perhaps the best category. <laughs> French onion, chipino. Now, I put 
Albandingas and yeah. Italian wedding. And what I mean by that okay. is just like meatball, meatball soup. soup. Yeah. And then – Well, then matzo – wait, matzo ball is not a meatball, right? No. It's like a – yeah, never mind. Correct. I did try to have like a it's soup a with balls. Ball. I didn't <laughs> want to have like a balls – like a soup with balls category, but I couldn't think of enough soups that were different enough. That had enough balls. Um, and then lastly, it's changed categories just in the interest of trying to keep it fair. Loaded baked potato soup I put into the Miss Soup Lanius because it can be – Rather, okay, but chunky, that could be creamy, a... all all things. Yeah, okay, I mean, yeah, that that makes sense. It could be so, in category one. Too. I feel like that's pretty fair. I got some of the ones that were dismissed back on here. Don't know how you guys feel about it. I like this. I think I don't think uh, we're really no missing anything this. this time. Yeah, I'll let it go, but I'm still against ramen being a soup. Well, an entire continent of people would disagree with me <laughs> on that one. <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> and I'm against matzo ball being deserving of being in this, but. <laughs> I agree. I don't see matzo ball making it past the first round. That's well, then why am I taking all the jokes, damn it? <laughs> now, here's my question, and I know I'm the bracketeer. I'm the official bracketer of this group. I've proven myself. You, many you have times over tried the years. and true, yes. Now, typically, I understand if you have different conferences, they have to play out to see who wins the conference, to see who kind of moves on to the next round. But my thought, rather than having the four dirty joke soups play it out, would be that each of the four regions have one of each category to kind of help randomize it. So that way, if the two best soups happen to both be from the Miss Soup Lanius category, they don't automatically knock mm-hmm. one of the best ones out in that first round. I'm okay with I that. Like of course, that, yeah. that's how you do it. I'm okay oh, with that, that too. Okay. Yes. yes, that is how uh, But you are putting yourself in a very vulnerable position of having all four soups from the Soup Plantation Winning. Conference. In the final four. That's entirely possible. Okay. That's exactly I'm okay why I'm willing to let something like that happen. Right. Yes. It will never happen, but I'm willing to let that okay. happen. I like it. All right. Well, in that case. Uh, well, that was easy. <laughs> yeah, that was really easy. Yeah, that was a lot easier than I thought it'd be. I was ready, I was ready for a, yeah. a little bit of a, an argument. Maybe Chris a, was doing push-ups in his office a yeah, little while yeah. ago because yeah. he thought he was going to have to fucking slap you around a little bit. All right. Well, then I guess on our Patreon episode, we will officially begin the bracket. For the Super Bowl. And until then, that's what's on the menu. Damn. Really fantastic stuff, Matt. Thank you. You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I I will order matzo ball soup if it's on the menu. So yeah. other people don't have to suffer through it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I don't I do like it. Like I, I uh, truly like it, but I think it's just because I love soup so much. I'm a big fan of chicken broth, but Matzo balls aren't good. So yeah, here's what the are thing. matzo balls good. again? They're, They're like, made out of matzo, which is a, meal. Like a, it's, yeah, meal. That's like right. Meal. That's meal. A really, really good matzo ball soup is pretty good. But <laughs> most matzo ball soup is mediocre, and that means it's kind of bad, in my opinion. I'm not going to sit here quietly and <laughs> take you guys shitting all over my culture. You're gonna, Gary. Matt, you're I have been to 375,000 delis with you. I've never seen you order matzo ball soup. I never have. Okay, there you go. But that doesn't mean you can speak rudely about it. <laughs> of all the soups on there, Matt, what do you eat the most? Like, what is the most common? Well, I'll tell clams. you what. My wife, over the weekend, made a potato leek soup, mm. and I just felt like... Let's just surrender to everything else right now <laughs> wow. because that was effing delicious. I do love loaded baked potato soup. That's going to go far. Again, to me, my heart of hearts, it's going to be between the French onion and the miso. But I know you guys don't like yeah. miso as much as I do. I, no, I, I, Is I'm that not really asking. what you think. Those are my two You're favorites. Totally Are you wrong. a betting man? T- no, no. He asked me what I want to win. No, no. no I, I didn't yeah. ask you what you want to win. What do you eat the most? Oh, what do I eat the most? Yeah, those two probably. French, French onion and miso. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I probably do French onion twice a year. Do you do French that. onion at home, Matt? No, I have before, but it's been a while. Okay. So do you find yourself often at restaurants with yeah, French onion? Absolutely. And it's your go-to. Oh yeah. If Mine. it's on the menu, I'm gonna definitely order that. Mine too. What's is that the one the soup you eat the most, Gary? The the soup I eat the most is probably gonna be a close tie between that and chicken tortilla. Ah, oh, chicken um, tortilla. I probably good. actually have more chicken tortilla but, than. But if we get into soups that I that come into my orbit more often, tomato is going to be heavy because I'll order a good tomato soup if I'm at a restaurant, and I also will have it probably on the side of a grilled cheese most times. Mm, Just very good. cheapy. Tomato didn't even make the cut. No, it didn't. I don't Shouldn't. think it should. Okay. I thought it made it into the weird soup. 
the dirty joke soup bracket. Yeah. Which Wasn't one? it there? Tomato, tomato soup's in the yeah, dirty joke bracket. Oh, it is. I oh, put okay. tomato back in yeah. there. Oh, yep. great. Okay. Dawson, what about you? What soup do you eat the most? Uh, the soup I eat the most is the soup I make the most. Yeah, and that uh, is. Chicken soup with uh, uh, a chini de pepe. I've had a dozen of chicken beans. soup, and it's very good. Is that different from your chicken tortilla that you brought in? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had your tortilla. That's really good. Thank you. And then, Ken, what about you? Yeah, probably chicken tortilla also. I'd also put clam chowder in that category. You eat a lot of clam chowder? I do like me. Clam chowder. Who doesn't? Mm. Yeah. Chowder is a, you go to a steakhouse, you got to get a cup of chowder. I always go cup of chowder. Oh, Anytime weird. it's on the menu. That's rich. I'm going that's cup of chowder. That's where you get the best French onion, though. Come on. Oh, that's true. They have the beef broth and the and French they've got onion. The, they've got the good oven to cook it up. Cook it yeah, up the and salamander. The, I, uh, mine is pho. I eat pho the most out of all those soups. That's why I think it's the clear winner because hmm. I eat it the most. But we shall see. And, uh, and good luck to all good luck. the contestants. All right. Well, it's time to get our plugs in. Gary has a plug that uh, he missed in the Patreon episode. And we should remind everybody that if you subscribe to our Patreon show, you get one extra episode a week. Um, depends what tier you want. Or you could actually have one extra video a week if you want to watch us sit around and talk, which I, uh, which actually people do find entertaining. Yeah, weird. Uh, surprisingly. And if you even tear up longer, yeah, look at Matt. Doing, Matt's <laughs> dancing right now, and he's he's seducing our uh, wow. our viewers. Jesus, yes. Yeah, so, oh, he's doing that face thing that they do in all the '90s movies, where he's like framing his face, and now he's doing the forbidden dance, the lambada. Limb- what is it called? I don't know. Oh, I don't know what we're talking about. I'm not doing anything. Yeah, you're just sitting. <laughs> he's there. just improvising. But uh, and then if you tear up even farther, we we submit one of our plugs and uh, and read a plug that a listener wrote, and Gary actually is going to do that today. <laughs> with, um, on on this episode, just because we couldn't get to it to, to them all last time, so uh, we'll get to that in a moment. But while we get our plugs in, we'll start here with Mister Kalen Bean. Uh, don't worry about me. Oh, oh. all right. <coughs> Never fear. If you subscribe, we don't let him do that during Patreon. Oh, that's he very does true. Plugs. There's always a plug mm-hmm. from Kalen in the in the Patreon it's episodes. Usually, the highlight of the plugs. It's yeah. I would say so too. I agree. He's one very, of the better plug readers. He guaranteed laugh every time. He's a very good plug reader. <laughs> Schumster. <laughs> See, Dawson knows. Schumster. All right. Matt, what about you? Oh, uh, well, you can follow me on Twitter at Matt Fondelier. And if you want to listen to the latest episode of Sword and Scale, number 173, it's a creepy story that I wrote and produced. And I heard it's very, very good. I wish I had the stomach for it, but I'll just download it anyway, get you that number. Thank you. Gary, what about you? Uh, you can go to uh, chunknibbles.com and use code wolfwolf15. Get yourself a discount if that's something you're interested in. Or uh, Reasonable Doubt every Saturday. Uh, reasonabledoubt.com. Reasonabledoubtpodcast.com or on YouTube. YouTube.com slash reasonabledoubtpodcast. Nice. Dawson. Uh, thank you guys, first of all, for getting uh, The Walrus Was Paul over 100 sales. Woo! Woo! Appreciate that. <laughs> now we got to work on Up On Game... Two, When oh. I Ruled the World. That's at 89. We've only sold 89 copies of that book. And it's fucking awesome. There's it's lock up from the inside. Plus 20 yeah. copies sold. So let's get that over 100. It's called Up on Game, When I Ruled the World by Richard Stanley. It's a fucking killer, killer story. All true. And um, fucking intense. And it's a fun yep. read. And I'll tell you the story. Get the audiobook, Please. That's right. Up on Game 2. And uh, as for me, it's not called up on game two. Well, it's the second. It's a yeah, second it's up on game when I ruled the world. I know, but yeah, no, I know. I said you know, it. the second, the second yes. one. Although, if you haven't read the first, one, if you haven't uh, read the first one either, get get all of them. Go, what is it? DawsonAudiobooks.com. Two is a good place to go. Yeah, uh, it could be there, but you can just search on Amazon, or you can go to Dos Angeles and click through the banner there that has the audiobooks on it. Right oh, even better, fancy. All right, and Gary, you have one more. Uh, sure. It, always gambling sixty nine. Always be gambling sixty nine sixty nine. As referenced earlier. Well, shit. Gary dropped the ball, and I get the honor of plugging something on the main show. <laughs> he must have been busy on a case or hanging out with the fellow frat guys. I'd just like to plug Gary's Jewish frat story. You can check it out on Patreon. Patreon dot com slash water cooler. Woof woof. <laughs> Thanks, guys. That's ah. a reason. That's a reason to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Always thank be you. gambling. And uh, as for me. Check out the Queen's Gambit. I think it's. I think it was very good. 
and uh, I was really happy with it. So I th- I will recommend the number one movie or one, number one series on Netflix right now. <laughs> it's, needs your help, man. Yeah, it needs our help, guys. So all right, that'll do it for Water Cooler. We'll be back Wednesday for the Patreon episode or Thursday, I guess, as you hear it. But we'll be back recording on Wednesday. Why am I? Why do I say it like that, Gary? I guess it depends what time zone you live in and when you download, because it's always up Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. All right. Well, there you go. So that'll do it. We love you. We'll see you later this week. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>